one of the president's main backers today calling on Biden to step out uh, of the race and not seek re-election. That is one actor, George Clooney. I have the op-ed in the New York Times uh, in front of me right now. I want to read from portions of it. He starts it by saying this, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I make no apologies for that. He says, I'm proud of what my party represents and what it stands for. He says, as part of my participation in the democratic process and in support of my chosen candidate, I have led some of the biggest fundraisers in my party's history. He goes on to say, I love Joe Biden. He says, I believe in him, believe in his character, believe in his morals. In the last four years, he's won many of the battles he's faced. He says, but the one battle he cannot win is the fight against time. None of us can. He says, it's devastating to say it, but the Joe Biden I was with three weeks ago at the fundraiser was not the Joe big effing deal Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. He was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. Uh, and so George Clooney calling on Biden not to seek re-election here. We're going to bring into the conversation our friend, political analyst, Brian Sobel. Let's uh, talk about what this means going forward. Brian, thanks for being with us here. I mean, what a day. Uh, we just went over kind of my lengthy peroration of more of these Democratic lawmakers who are calling on Biden to step aside. And now George Clooney. I mean, Brian, George Clooney and many other high-profile celebrities in L.A. three weeks ago raised $30 million dollars for the Biden re-election campaign. Three weeks later, he's saying, shouldn't have done it, Biden, sh Biden shouldn't run for re-election. $30 million, Brian. I mean, that is uh, quite the payback, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Uh, they, they, in Hollywood, uh, can raise a lot of money. And people often ask me, well, why, don't, why do all these uh, presidential aspirants and other people come to California? Well, it's simple. Uh, California is an ATM. Uh, California is a, a decided state in terms of uh, it being blue and, and who they'll vote for, uh, but the money's here. And so that's why uh, Hollywood types have a lot of influence. And by the way, in Northern California, in Silicon Valley, why they have a lot of influence uh, on both sides of the aisle. They pony up real dollars. And that's the difference. So when uh, George Clooney uh, uh, released the op-ed today in the New York Times, uh, that had to have sent a huge shockwave through the Biden administration and the Biden campaign. Uh, and, and of course, you've read part of it. Um, the, I, I, I encourage your uh, viewers to, uh, to, to find it online and read it. Uh, but uh, there, he answers the question about what happens if you, if you decide that Biden isn't your candidate, you know, what, what occurs? And he talks about in his op-ed, uh, democracy is messy. It'll be messy to, to change uh, horses at this late uh, date, but um, that's the way it has to be. And he refers to uh, the debate being the, the decider. It was, it was clear to him uh, during the debate that this wasn't the uh, person he wanted to see move forward. I mean, if you're George Clooney, do you ask for your money back from the Biden campaign? I mean, you have to wonder these questions here. I mean, would this move the needle, say, more than Senator Welch of Vermont or Bennett of Colorado or these nine House Democrats? I mean, if you're hunkering down in the Biden campaign here and you see this, but you also see what's taking place on Capitol Hill, which has more weight, do you think? Uh, Hollywood has a lot of weight. Okay. Uh, Silicon Valley has a lot of weight because it's attached to the lifeblood of any campaign, and that's the money. Um, you know, Jerry Maguire, <laughs> show me the money. That's what they uh, look forward uh, to uh, in, in talking to these people about what they can raise for the party, for the individual. And, you know, nine nine Dems in, in, a, uh, in, uh, in the House of Representatives, and there are hundreds of people, uh, you can live with that. One senator, maybe. Um, but when your support starts crumbling uh, outside of the the beltway, which a lot of people tend to ignore anyway, uh, that's that's very problematic for him. So um, we have a live picture right now. This is outside the White House. Uh, the president and the first lady uh, are welcoming the NATO leaders uh, to the White House for a welcome dinner there. And you see President Biden and the NATO Secretary General, Jen Stoltenberg, uh, Biden bestowing on Stoltenberg just yesterday the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Here, yes. you know, I want to go back to Bennett's comments on CNN 
yesterday. Uh, he said Trump is going to win, maybe in a landslide. He's not calling on Biden, though, to step aside from the race itself, to not seek re-election. Are they one and the same, though? Is that an implicit call on Biden to step aside without having to say Biden absolutely. should step aside? Okay. Andrew, absolutely. It's, it's the same as your reference to the comments by uh, Nancy Pelosi. It, it, she pulled a punch. She said, hey, I, I, you know, I, I can't tell the president to step down. But what I will say is that he, we support any decision he makes, kind of. Um, the Schumer uh, behind the scenes um, maneuvering. All of these people are moving away from the president. And of course, you know, that may also include uh, people from the Obama camp and others are saying uh, it's, it's time, Mr. President, to to uh, decide to move ahead and have uh, another candidate who may have a chance of beating uh, Donald uh, Trump. And you can see the luminaries on the screen there, by the way. Yeah, we just saw Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine from yes. Kishida of Japan here. You know, um, Brian, help me make sense. It seems like there's some cognitive dissonance going on. Um, many, like I said, are saying he possibly can't beat Trump, but they're also saying full-throatedly, we're with Biden. They're saying that with whatever he decides to do. We're with Biden with whatever he decides to do. He's already decided what to do, Brian. Right. He said, I'm staying in. He wants this story to go away. He says, I'm not going anywhere. He's already decided what to do. And so many of these Democrats, especially today, are saying we're with him with whatever he decides to do. What, what does it mean? Right. Uh, it, it, it means that they're sa signaling to him Hey, we want you to move off the stage, uh, and we want to give you some um, some space to do that. And so he's saying, "I'm going to continue to run." And the uh, and at the same time, um, they're saying, "Hey, basically, we don't want you to run." And and so it uh, it's it's a tough spot for the president. Yeah. And you know, as I'm looking at these pictures with sure, the fife and drum corps and all that, you know, this is. Um, this is uh, what somebody who has reached the level of the presidency, um, you know, can can enjoy. I mean, and it's hard to walk away from the pomp and circumstance and all the things that come with the presidency. Um, and and at the same time, um, he has to come to a very a tough decision. And his inside group, his his closest advisors, have to have to help him make a very, very tough decision. Yeah, we're watching uh, this all play out. It looks like a, kind of a stormy night there in Washington. It's uh, about 7.45. All the NATO leaders gathered on the steps there. It's quite, quite a sight there as well. But to your point, the trappings of power are quite seductive and intoxicating, Brian. No one gives up power so willingly, so voluntarily. Nope. To your point here, I want to put up this tweet more on George Clooney. He just called out Dem after Dem. He's saying top Democrats, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, Nancy Pelosi, and senators, representatives, and other candidates who face losing in November need to ask this president to voluntarily step aside. Of course, we know House Democratic leadership are meeting with senior Biden White House and senior Biden campaign officials tomorrow night. Uh, obviously, President Biden has this press conference solo at that he'll be conducting tomorrow on the occasion of the NATO summit there in D.C. But Brian, you hear so often from the Biden campaign specifically that Trump represents the gravest threat to our democracy since the founding of the republic. But if Biden says, I'm the only one who can beat Donald Trump, and then when George Stephanopoulos asks, well, what if you're not taking the oath of office January 20th, 2025, and Trump is, and Biden says, well, if I did my best, that's all I can do. Is that also a contradiction? If, if Biden oh, is willing to say Trump might be president, how does the threat to democracy line hold? So much of what we hear sometimes, Andrew, is just heightened hyperbole. Uh, the... Uh Let's see, uh, the election of 
of you know the seventh president of the United States, Andrew Jackson, the same way. Oh, it's going to uh, be the ruination of the nation. Uh, he he doesn't understand what the six predecessors went through to help found the nation. You know, every president comes in uh, and faces a challenge. Uh, every president comes in with the other side of the of the aisle saying, "Oh, this is going to be a disaster." Um, you know, over the years, you just come to expect that. But uh, there's some heightened rhetoric going on right now. That's that's in my view, way overblown. Okay, Brian, I know I have asked you this question before, and I'm going to do so again. Uh, we're less than four months away from Election Day. We're less than a week away from the RNC convention. Um, we're being told that, you know, we know the DNC is going to have a virtual roll call before the in-person convention there in Chicago. Uh, and you've heard from some of these senior Democrats, including Pelosi today, saying, with whatever happens, it needs to happen soon. What do you think is going to happen? Is Biden accepting I, the nomination in Chicago next month? I, I think there has to be a decision soon. Uh, I'm not an expert on the rules of the uh, Democrat convention, uh, but to the extent that the president can make a decision, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from now or whatever, uh, I would think that he would be encouraged to do that by his insiders. However, uh, time is running out. Uh, and it has to be something that, in my view, a decision has to be made very, very soon, because otherwise it uh, it delays the opportunity of the replacement to really get out there quickly and to uh, enjoy um, the time necessary to campaign for the presidency. Yeah, but Ryan, just lastly, too, I mean, how high stakes is the press conference tomorrow? We know he sat down with George Stephanopoulos on Friday. We're also learning, Brian, uh, on Monday, he'll sit down with Lester Holt of NBC News. Monday night, he called in yesterday to Morning Joe on MSNBC. Uh, and kind of the consensus had formed that none of those appearances in the media were damning or perilous. They kind of kept the situation status quo with Biden's stance as the candidate here. Is the press conference uh, a whole new beast to be reckoned with? It, yes. Um, I think that enough of the media have come to the conclusion that they need to start asking tough questions. And it's going to be unscripted. And, and we know uh, that uh, you know the two recent radio interviews that he did, the White House sent out the, uh, the questions to the interviewers. Uh, that's not good. Uh, he called into the Morning Joe show. Well, calling in means he could sit there with all kinds of notes in front of him. But the media conference with the media in front of him, uh, now he will be uh, directing uh, you know, to the to the audience, uh, you know, probably favorites in the sense of who would be asking questions. Um, but even so, if those people are doing their job, they're going to ask very tough questions of the uh, president, and we're going to get a real sense of whether he's on his game uh, tomorrow or not. And um, and again, uh, with uh, Lester Holt, who has a good reputation, I think that you know Lester Holt will come in and ask some very tough questions, and I don't think the president will have a preview of those. Um, so it's he's got he's got some very tough days uh, until Monday, and including Monday. Yeah, that seems to be the feeling right now. The Biden White House, the Biden campaign um, are dug in, no matter the calls. Do you get that sense? Yes, for the moment. Okay. Um, I think the first lady. And people who are closest to the president say, hey, we can weather this thing. We just got to get through this rough patch. Okay. Well, if the rough patch is remains rough, it, it's a done deal. Yeah, this is quite the long rough patch. Brian yep. Sobel, thanks so much for being with us here. We'll talk soon. Absolutely. Have a great evening. All right. In the meantime here, we do want to take uh, our final commercial break of the hour. Hope you found that conversation uh, informative uh, and important. Uh, and if you have any questions that you want me to ask some of our experts and reporters and analysts, please uh, reach out to me there uh, on social media as well. A live now look there at the U.S. Capitol. Kind of a stormy night there in Washington, D.C. here. Uh, final note, though, Jamie Harrison, the chairman of the DNC, with this tweet. He says President Biden is the most pro-union president we've seen. And here are a few of the things he's done for workers since taking office, creating good paying union jobs and clean energy and extending overtime protections and wage growth, beating price growth for 15 months in a row. Biden speaking to the AFL-CIO 
earlier today. You'll hear him after the break.